In this video, I'll explain the tapers you're gonna encounter whenever you're working with drill chucks and really any kind of self-holding tapers. Now, first off, the difference between a self-holding taper and a not self-holding taper is a pretty large difference. This is an R8 collet. This is what you would use in a mill, like a horizontal milling machine. And it's it has a holding taper. And this, all it does is basically just clamps down on whatever you're holding. So if you have a end mill, like a finishing end mill in here, what that does is it clamps down on there. It's just a taper that applies pressure. But once you unscrew the draw bar, it just pops right out. It's not a self-holding taper. These, on the other hand, whenever you pop them into the tailstock of your metal lathe, in this case, or a wood lathe, or a drill chuck, those self-hold and they won't come out. The tailstock of this lathe has a what's called a Morse taper number three and there's different sizes and that's how they're labeled. And to pop it out, you just pull it all the way back. And what that does is it'll hit the end of it and that pops it out really easy. But whenever that's held in there, there's and there can be huge amounts of forces on that taper and it's still gonna hold. And it's, it's, a really, it's a pretty precise angle here that matches with that angle on the tailstock and that's what holds it in place. These are the three main kinds of self-holding tapers you'll see. This is a Morse taper number one taper, this is a Morse taper number two, and this is a Morse taper number three. The Morse tapers continue to go up to uh, maybe even seven, and that's a big taper. So mainly you're gonna see it go up to probably about four, and that'll be a pretty large taper. Really, I think in most common machinery, one, two, and three is the most common you'll see. The second kind of self-holding taper is a Jacobs taper, and that's what actually holds the chuck onto the Morse taper. So in order to actually have this inside of the chuck, it's almost like it's screwed on the taper, but it's, it's not actually part of the chuck. It's just a shank that is held on with that self-holding taper. So here's one where that has been popped out, and that's basically the same principle as you'd like a tailstock on your lathe. There's another taper that fits right in there, and that's what this shank is right here. This has a JT3 taper. And the way that they're named is just the same as the Morse tapers. The Morse tapers, I think, are a little bit easier to understand because the smallest is a number one, and then as the numbers get larger, the tapers get larger. But with the Jacobs taper, there's like a, like for example, on this small chuck here, this is a Jacobs taper 33, and it's a pretty small taper. And then the next size up can be like a Jacobs taper one. And you can see how that would get confusing. So they, they really range in size. This is a Jacobs taper number three with a Morse taper on the back. And you can get these in all kinds of configurations for all kinds of different size drill chucks. Whenever these go together, they hold really well. Cause I mean, how often do you have the drill chuck pop off of its shank? You don't see that too often. And that's cause these Jacobs taper hold really well. And the Jacobs taper was actually invented by Jacobs, which is the one of the more classic manufacturers of this chuck. This is a Jacobs style chuck. There's lots of different, like these are import chucks right here that were, I mean, you can say like $15 on eBay. And this is a Jacobs, a genuine Jacobs chuck. They, they were some of the original people to come up with this design. And that Jacobs taper pops onto the back. When these two tapers go together, it's extremely important that the two mating surfaces are clean. Like right now there's a little bit of rust dust in there. And if, if just those little particles in there will completely throw off the seal. So it needs to be really clean in there. Just make sure that's no debris, no dirt or burrs in order to make a good tight seal. Then you just put both surfaces together, just like that. Give it a little tap. What you can do is you can pull on that. And if you can't pull it, see there's a little bit of rust and you can actually see on the surface there, there's some rust dust left over. So that means not quite clean enough in there. That's always a good test. If you stick it in there and you, should, you shouldn't you should be able to pull it out yourself after tapping it. With a little bit of scotch right, I just knocked some of that rust loose. And now I really, I can't get this thing apart. <laughs> Those are some of the basics of the self-holding tapers. And they're really cool because whenever you think about it, it's just two tapers basically meeting each other. And it can hold itself just by pressing it together really lightly, it can hold itself so well, I can't pop it off. 
And then this MT3 shank fits right into my tailstock. And what it's, another cool thing is you've got this little tab on the end of it. And what that does is it keeps it from being able to spin inside of your tailstock. So if you're drilling and the drill is putting a lot of rotational force on the Morse taper, sometimes that can cause it to break loose. So having that tab on there can keep it from spinning.